The story of Tokai Mira is often centred on just a 210 day stretch of suffering. Hisashi Owachi and Masato Shinohara are only remembered for the horror that they endured, and even then, their story is misrepresented or outright fabricated. I do not agree with this treatment. The third man, their boss, a name many do not know, is treated as a villain who knowingly condemned his colleagues to death. But Yutaka Yokokawa is not that man. Very little about the lives of these three men is available online. This is a compendium of the verifiable facts about them. Two of them lived less than half the life they should have. Born at some point in September of 1964 in the Ibaraki region of Japan, Hisashi Owuchi's life was fairly uneventful. At the age of 10, Owuchi suffered a heavy head injury, requiring a month of hospitalisation. And again at 16, he would spend another month in hospital due to severe gastric ulcers. But he recovered from both and returned to education. It was in high school that Owuchi met his wife, Chizuru, his first and sole love. For seven years, the two of them dated, and then they got married. They were both close, and when neither of them were working, they were almost inseparable. In 1991, Hisashi and Chizuru welcomed their first child into the world, a son. When Owuchi graduated from high school in 1983, it would not take long for him to find work amidst Tokai Mira's large nuclear industry as a labourer at the JZO Nuclear Fuel Cycle Company, assisting in the production of nuclear fuel. As Owuchi's career progressed, so did his wage. By 1997, the family were rich enough to move into a newly built house, just in time for their son to begin elementary school. It was a good job, one he assured Chizuru was not actually dangerous despite her fears. At 176 centimetres tall and 76 kilograms in weight, Owuchi was a tall, rather stocky man. In high school, he played rugby, but it wasn't a sport he carried into his adult life. Fishing was his top passion and something he managed to fit into his carefully managed daily schedule. Waking up at 6am, he would leave the house at 6.40 and start his shift at 7. Throughout the day, he would smoke a pack of cigarettes and in the evening, he would drink two glasses of shochu and water, retiring for sleep at 9pm. A simple life. A safe life. Unfortunately for the other two workers, very little information is known about them. A combination of a lack of press coverage and public desire for information. Both were overshadowed by the story of Owuchi, as well as out of respect for the families. This is what is publicly known. Born sometime in the last two months of 1959, Masato Shinohara was 39 years old in September of 1999. Rather tall, at 180 centimetres, and weighing about 67 kilograms. He was married to Sachiko Shinohara, one year younger, with three children. Shinohara had joined JCO in 1984, when it was called Japan Nuclear Fuel Conversion Company. In 1997, he had been given the role of processing the fuel for the Joyo nuclear reactor, a Wuchi superior but subordinate to Yokokawa. Even less is known about this third man. We know that Yokokawa was born in November of 1945, when Japan was under Allied occupation in Tokaimira. Standing at 177 centimeters tall, slightly above Owuchi, and weighing somewhere between 70 and 75 kilograms, he had by far the most experience out of the group. In the 1970s, Yokokawa was working at the National Institute of Radiological Sciences. Ten years later, 
he joined JCO and worked his way up to the head of the department. Yokokawa was a smoker and a diabetic, and also struggled with depression and other psychological issues. These three men, Hisashi, Masato, and Yutaka, were not just work colleagues. They were also close friends. After work, the group would occasionally go fishing, and all three families kept in close contact. Owochi, Shinohara, and Yokokawa, as well as a fourth person by the name of Hiroshi Watanabe, formed what was dubbed the Special Crew, and the group specialised in the manufacturing of uranium oxide powder. This would take a sudden and dramatic change in March of 1999, when Yokokawa was invited to the conversion test building. This is where nuclear fuel was produced for the experimental reactors, in particular the Joyo sodium cooled fast reactor. Why was it kept separate from the rest of the site? Because the enrichment level was much higher. At the time, the conversion test building was crewed directly by Chief Fuji and assisted by Katsunori Hasi. So while Yokokawa was initially unsure about working in this unfamiliar place, he was reassured that everything would be alright, as Hasi had also accompanied them on the tour. This would not last long, however. By April of the same year, Hase had left the conversion test building due to chronic back pain, while Chief Fuji retired from work altogether, authorising for the work they carried out to be passed on to Yokokawa and the rest of the special crew. This left Owuchi, Shinohara, Yokokawa, and Watanabe in charge of a process they had never attempted before. Despite learning what they could from Katsunori Hasi before he left, they never fully understood the complete process, and equally understood from the guidelines that active bending of the rules was required to complete orders. Disagreements also seemed to evolve between the special crew, with Yokokawa claiming that Watanabe had no idea about anything that involved the conversion test building. In 1999, JCO received their ninth order to produce more highly enriched fuel for use at the Joyo reactor, and the task was naturally given to the special crew. It was Owuchi's and Shinohara's first time actually working in the building. Watanabe did not participate in the later stages of fuel production. On September 29th, Yokokawa inquired about the use of a sedimentation tank in the production of the fuel. There were no negative responses to the request, and it was taken as permission to do so. Four of the seven batches of uranium were prepared and poured into the precipitation tank, with the last three to be poured into the precipitation tank on September 30th. After work, all three men, still in their light blue JCO uniforms, went fishing in a nearby river. The weather turned cold, and Yokokawa gave Shinohara a jumper as they continued to catch rockfish late into the evening. The following day, at 10am, Owuchi, Shinohara, and Yokokawa would re-enter the conversion test building. In 35 minutes, two of them would be handed a death sentence by their own actions.